have to realize that and put, pay very close attention to that and be our whole key I think as a team is to be very very good listeners to our coaching staff and when we are good listeners and do what's set up for us uh, offensively and defensively we're a pretty good basketball team so the team of good listeners from Indiana all ready to take on Lou Henson and Illinois we'll have the action live in a moment CBS Sports presents NCAA the matchups we can expect. Ken Norman, who's played very well this year for Illinois, and Rick Calloway, the talented freshman from Cincinnati. Anthony Welsh of the Illini, and Todd Meyer moves into the starting lineup for Coach Knight. We'll amplify that story shortly. Ephraim Winters for the Illini, and Daryl Thomas down inside for Bob Knight. Bruce Douglas, talented defensive guard. Winston Morgan, good Indiana athlete. And Glenn Blackwell, left-handed, a shooter for Lou Henson. And Stuart, of course, one of the leading scorers in the country, the all America will have to watch. Billy, let's uh, go into Bob Knight's lineup change here today. Todd Meyer moves in, and of course, he took Andre Harris out. Why was that? Well, Andre Harris wasn't giving Bobby the defensive uh, intensity that he wanted. It wasn't getting the concentration that he wanted, and Bob is the kind of guy that will go to lineup changes at a minute. So it, it may not be long before he's in there because he's a good athlete, and going up against Illinois, you need good athletes. Speaking of going to a lineup at a moment's notice, people in Champaign-Urbana remember last year, that was when Knight started the freshman when he went over there. Welsh with the first shot of the game. Rebounded by Indiana, and they will come down now with the ball. And Winston Morgan yanked it away, and he hits Alford. Watch how Alford cuts without the ball. That'll be the key to the Indiana offense here this afternoon. Straight man-to-man -man by both teams. They mirror each other in the way they play. They both use the passing game. Both play very tough man-to-man -to -man defense. Thomas going inside through the foul from Norman. Thomas does not have the size of a post man that you would normally think of, but he's really a power forward playing in the post. He moves so well, he's so quick, and he's powerful on the inside, so it's very difficult to guard him if you're used to a man of that size. Thomas is playing with a very painful ankle. He twisted it, and that has slowed him somewhat in the pivot. He stayed after practice yesterday to work on that move that we just saw. They want Thomas to try and be aggressive here against this talented defensive team of Lou Henson's and get to the glass as frequently as he can. Good free throw shooter. You'll see the Indiana team in constant movement in their passing game. They don't want to set anybody posting up down low, just standing there. They keep them moving. It's tough for the defenders to stay with them. Winters going to the glass. Now, he was scoreless against Ohio State. No schneid here this afternoon. He takes care of that early. Ephraim, uh, an outstanding power player on the inside. Callaway, the talented freshman. Again, good movement without the ball. Good penetration by Winston Morgan. Indiana leading by two. First turnover of the game. Callaway has offered ahead of him. Nice. He did a nice job of bringing the defender out to him before he went to the pass. Excellent play on the steal. He really could have passed the ball to Offord, but he didn't get the right spacing. He had a defender in the way. Perfect ball handling. Welsh. And there was also a whistle blown underneath. Welsh hitting the field goal out on top and score the basket. Now, Bruce Douglas has really been problems for Indiana to handle. Winston Morgan's handling him right now. He's got the size. Callaway came over to help out on the double team. You'll see the foul underneath pushing off by Todd Meyer. But when Callaway came over to help out, that allowed Welch to be wide open. You've got to give up something if you're going to play this kind of defense. Bobby Knight's going to give up the outside shot. They get the ball to winners, and that aggressive defense slapped it away and out of bounds. Henson is yelling foul, and so is Knight. Well, both of these coaches are going to work these officials today because they both bang a lot on the inside. And, and when you have Thomas going against winners, you're going to see some real bodies going in there. And the turnaround field goal now, for Illinois and another whistle. Now, the whistle this time, and again, we said the coaches are going to work these officials. That time, Ephraim Winters trying to go back at Thomas throws a little elbow of his own and gets called. I guarantee when the officials go by down Lou Henson's end, he's going to be talking to him too. He already is. We're tied at six. 
Morgan controlling the game. They get it inside to Thomas. Missed the shot, got his own miss, and put it in. And Henson won't like the fact that they gave them two opportunities inside like that. Illinois, far superior team statistically in the rebounding edge, so we'll see if they continue to allow Indiana to get those second shots. They are allowing Welsh to have the outside shot. They are giving him that right now. Morgan again bringing it down. Alford cutting. Douglas trailing him. Here is Alford looking for his first shot of the afternoon. Good punt. It. Douglas was with him, and now Callaway on the drive. Misses loose. Here come the Illini. Douglas's pass was behind the man, and that brought about the turnover. Very unusual for Bruce Douglas to throw a ball that way, Brent. And what was going on there is you had Welsh looking for the lob. He thought he could go ahead and go for the dunk. And as you pointed out, Douglas threw it right behind him. We're talking about the number one assist leader in the Big Ten. Good play. Good steal by Blackwell. Block at the other end by Winston Morgan. Great athletic plays on the part of both Blackwell and Morgan. Blackwell coming out, overplaying the pass. He's got a breakaway. Winston Morgan ties this beautifully, makes a clean block. Morgan and the Hoosiers up by two, 16-49, first half. Of course, Bobby Knight lost Winston Morgan to an injury two years ago. Douglas foot injury. ties it. That's a big shot for Illinois because Douglas is not known for his outside shooting. If he hits a couple of those, he'll extend Indiana's defense out. One of the best defensive guards in America is Bruce Douglas, and he's on Alford, so quite a matchup. Alford missing field goal attempt. Illinois coming back with an opportunity to take the lead at the 16-minute mark. Norman. Now, Indiana is allowing men to set up down low and playing behind them. Pretty easy to get the ball inside. You get Norman and Welch and Winters the ball down that low. They're going to score. So far defensively, it has been the job on that turnover by Callaway. Defensively, it has been the job that Douglas is doing on Alford. He is battling through the screens, and Steve Alford is having difficulty getting open for Knight right now. in Indiana. Billy, you know, Bob Knight has assistant coaches and former assistants scattered all across the land. Look at these gentlemen who are head coaches. Mike Krzyzewski, who's done such a great job at Duke. Bob Donawald, he's one of the best ones. Don DeVoe at Tennessee. Now, these men assisted Bob not only at West Point, but also here at Indiana. Of course, uh, a lot of people, in addition to those assistants, have uh, attended many of the clinics that Bob puts on around the country where he is one of the best clinicians in the whole United States. Puts on one-man clinics and uh, really does a great job with it. So he has disciples everywhere. Blackwell holding the ball a bit too long for the coach. He yelled at him, gets it back. He's a fine outside shooter. That's a dimension that Doug Altenberger, of course, gave uh, Illinois with him down and out for the year with an injury. They've got to get some outside shooting. Meyer coming out high. Well, there's a push off by Alford. Knocks Douglas down, gets a wide open jumper. He doesn't hit it. But an offensive rebound by Thomas, who scores. There was a push off by Steve Alford. He's a lot tougher ball player than you give him credit for. He's got that choir boy look, but he plays hard nose. Douglas backing in, and this is something that Bob Knight does not want to happen. Welsh maneuvering for his jump shot. And what happened here, Brent, if Douglas is going to back the defense all the way inside the foul line, the defense obviously in a good position to run their offense. Knight calling Callaway over for a word of instruction. That's why he's late coming into your picture. Douglas is going to be sore when this game is over. Jason offered all over the floor, running into screens at every occasion. Callaway ships it back, and Alford thought about it. Good hands by Douglas. Alford getting inside, misfiring, and there will be a jump ball. 
That was great weak side defense that time by Ephraim Winters, who came over to help out. Steve Alford going back door on Douglas, who's trying to overplay to prevent him from handling the ball. Excellent defense on the part of both of these teams. So well coached. That's an old habit that sometimes is hard to break by saying there's a jump ball. The possession arrow was pointing against Lou Henson in Illinois. Indiana will have the ball out of bounds underneath their own basket. Straight man to man on the out of bounds situation. Douglas is all over Alford like a blanket. Blackwell is stepping out. Thomas is the offense for Knight right now. That's three field goals out of four shots. Blackwell stepping out on Winston Morgan, trying to prevent him from handling the ball. Morgan, Morgan may be able to go back door on him before this is over with. Nice. Douglas is open. And he's hit two outside. And there's a case again where Bob Knight's philosophy is do you have to give up something. You're giving up the outside shot. There was a double team there, and obviously Douglas is able to hit those jumpers. Puts a lot of pressure on the defense. Callaway. Illinois giving them one shot that time. Norman with the rebound. Henson signaling the play as the offense comes past the Illini bench. turns back from the baseline and there was a foul as Winston Morgan yanked down the rebound Welsh hit it. Kind of surprised if Welsh was going to go one on one there that Norman didn't go ahead and move away and set a screen to give him a little opening because in effect by Norman staying right in the way Welsh didn't have any room to maneuver. Give you an idea of how well Douglas is playing right now. Steve Alford is one of four and that was a layup on the fast break. Clean out now for Alford a little bit. Douglas' arms are nice and long. Makes it tough. Alford cut away from Myers' throw, which went out of bounds on the turnover. Illinois' ball. That's three turnovers by Indiana and two here early by Illinois. 16-12, Illinois leading at the 12-40 mark. You notice how Morgan is picking Douglas up much higher now so that when he backs in, he won't be in so close to the basket. Slight move, but a very important move defensively. Now from the perimeter, the Illini have been red hot. That was Blackwell again. His that's second from outside in three attempts. That's not something you could expect. He's a good shooter, but Illinois usually tacks inside first. Thomas. That's going to be up from Winner's second foul. Winner's claiming that he he controlled the position up in the air, but his hands were outstretched. Uh, Lou Henson really upset, but he's got to go. He's got to go to the bench. Scott Mentz comes in, so uh, a real talented player. Mentz has been both uh, valuable to this team as a starter as well as a sub throughout his career. Winters sits down. Thomas has been the man, Brent. A couple of years ago, Winters was being touted as a certain first-round draft pick in the NBA, but subsequent to that, his stock has dropped considerably. Well, it has, and maybe all of us kind of misunderstood what his talents really were. He, he, as a high school player, was physically about the same as he is today. So Mintz 30 is the first sub in this game. Nice move. There's Douglas again, backing in that defense. Bad pass, but the Illini get it back. Now they ship it again into the arms of Callaway, and Douglas from the rear forces it, and an easy field goal for Norman. That's a four-point turnaround, and Bob Knight's not going to stand for that. Rick Callaway making a mistake by not hitting the ball up ahead to somebody. You got to realize Douglas is coming from behind. We well, like to see well-drilled teams, and both of these really have it. Defensively in the middle. 
it's really a thing of beauty to watch the five men switch and work together the way they do. And the way they have bottled up Alford, who look at him maneuvering against Douglas just to try and get some daylight. Yeah, you can see his respect for Douglas not going up with that jumper because he knows Douglas is not only a good leaper, but he's got those long arms. Good back door. And look great at Blackwell switch. switch out right away. Mince with the foul on the pass into Thomas. That was great defense by Illinois that time, even though they make a mistake at the end with the foul. That was a great switch by Blackwell. Now here's Alford trying to get open, but you see, he would have normally gone up for that jump shot. He realizes Douglas has got the ability to block it from there. Now, Douglas gets lost in the pack. Alford's going to take him a little back door. There goes the back door cup, and here comes the great switch by Blackwell. Well, you want to see how it's supposed to be done. That was it right there. When we come back, my man Andre Harris has checked in for <laughs> night. I'm looking for an explosion from him. Three straight in the Big Ten. Their toughest loss, well, that came against Michigan. It was a buzzer beater for the Wolverines. Henderson passes to Jobert behind the baseline. His pass intercepted by Winters, picked up by Douglas. He lays it in. Tie game. Here comes Grant the other way. Hooks it over to Henderson. Henderson fake shoots at the buzzer. Get on! So that's how that ended. And the Illini have now boosted the record to four and three with the three straight times. Here is Alford. And again, Douglas was all over him. And the Illini come back trying to get a break. Good defense by Harris, who had just checked in for Coach Knight. He did not start. Knight was not pleased with his performance against Purdue. He's a JC transfer. He has a lot of athletic talent, but he has not yet picked up mentally on Knight's system. Mintz with the shot outside. He got the roll. Scott Nets has the ability to go out and hit that jumper. Illinois is really playing textbook basketball so far. And they lead it 22-14 as a result. They have five team fouls, only one for Indiana. Thomas and Harris blasting into the boards. Could not come up with it. Instead, it went to Welsh. It's a great job by Welsh not to lose his footing. I expect to see, as you do, Harris Sky here in a minute going up for a rebound. Travel. As Harris started down the floor, he glanced quickly over to the bench to see if the coach was going to yell at him about anything. Uh, I think he'd be all right here in a second. He's really concentrating right now. Here's Thomas. And Harris couldn't control, so this will go over to the Illini on this jump ball situation. Good rebounding on the inside. Pretty good blockout position. Illinois probably going to have to start going back inside a little bit. They've been winning with a perimeter shot. Norman hasn't touched it much. Meyer doing a pretty good job. Let's see if they don't try to pound it inside. It is that outside shooting, Billy, that has built this lead here with 9.30 to go in the first half. Clear out. There's Mentz has got good position. They let him have it. Good play. Pounded it right inside. Good job by Illinois. And a big key for Indiana. They've got to figure out a way to get Steve Alford some shots. Right now, Douglas is on him like a blanket. Thomas on the run. Looks good offensively. He's keeping the Hoosiers in this one. Little hook move by Thomas that time. Very often you'd be called for an offensive foul using that hand for positioning. Way downtown. Blackwell. Oh! And by Welsh. And Knight won't love Welsh coming inside and not having a block out. Exactly. No block out at all. Welch really going to the roof on that play. Morgan was fouled as he began his assault on the hoop. That's the first personal on Blackwell. And Weisiger will check in here for Coach Henson. Now, this is a matchup problem, Brent. When you bring Weisinger in a game, he's going to be on Winston Morgan. Unless they're going to try to switch Douglas over there. And it really causes a problem. No, he's going to play Weisinger on Winston Morgan. Morgan should be able to do some things inside. 
Again, there's those hands of Douglas. And he got back inside to help out and knock the ball free. Good hustle by Thomas. Saved it for Indiana. A Winston Morgan. There's a case where maybe Douglas tried to do a little. Twenty six eighteen Illinois with the ball and the lead. Weisinger returned in the Ohio State game. He'd been out with a separated shoulder. He brings a little speed to the attack for the Illini. Douglas maneuvering rises up with a jump shot. Alford rebounded. He's going to look to pull up. He's going to look to pull up. Gets it to Callaway with a spectacular move, and he's drew the foul from Welsh. Oh, that freshman got some skill. That was about as good a quick first step as you're going to see in basketball. Rick Callaway takes it baseline. It's extremely quick, very agile. One of the top freshman players in the United States. Now, Delray Brooks did not make it here at Indiana. He grew up with his lack of time, so he has left the Hoosiers, and he will play at Providence. That's the school where he transferred to, and I guess the feeling was somewhat mutual. They were very disappointed in the talent that he displayed here at Indiana, too. Well, one thing that was interesting there is that there was no entity on either side. No. Bob Knight wishing him the best at, at his choice to go into Providence, and Delray looking for a new opening, get some playing time. We've got a timeout. It's a six-point lead by the Alliance. Well, let's take a look at his younger brother, Eddie Bird, averaging 21 points a game in high school. And guess who's proud of Eddie? You bet. He showed up to watch a recent game. A very good outside shooter, decent rebounder, and all-around player. And someone asked him where he'd like to go to school, and he said, I'd like to go to Boston College and be near Larry. I know that Indiana State, Illinois State, and Evansville are also interested in young Bird. And here in Bloomington, Indiana, the Fighting Illini with possession and a six-point lead, 7.30 to go here in the first half. Blackwell back in the game. Douglas out probably just for a little rest. Interesting to see how Indiana goes and uses off for the rest of the way. And Lowell Hamilton, one of the most touted freshmen, and there was a foul as Norman rose up inside, hit the field goal, and also drew the personal. Now, Todd Meyer is doing a pretty good job banging down here with Norman. Norman using his body well, makes a good catch. Meyer gets caught on his hip. Norman spins right up without putting the ball on the floor, which was the key to that play. Scores and has a for a three-pointer. Norman is the player on this team who has shown a great deal of improvement in the last couple of years. Here this afternoon, he's three of he's four of four from the line. Now Indiana really playing a small team. Stu Robinson in the game. They really moved Winston Morgan up into the forward position now. So you've got Robinson and Alford in the backcourt. Robinson taking a point. Well, let's see if Blackwell. Blackwell is picked off almost immediately by a Thomas screen. Winston Morgan rebounded, and the ball is blocked. Weisinger for Illinois. Norman on the right wing, hustling back. Missed shot. Rebound Callaway. And now it's Robinson who's checked in for Knight. Pressuring the Illinois defense if they get some quick shots here for Alford. Thomas wants it inside. Makes a move. Cut off from the baseline. Hamilton, the freshman from Chicago, was there. Now it's Norman at the other end for the Illini. Well, Hamilton, an exciting young athlete. Outstanding player in Illinois last year. Led the team to the state high school championship. He's coming along slowly, but once he gets his whole game together, it'll be a real factor in the Big Ten. Thomas loses the ball out of bounds. Illinois has built an 11-point lead at the 619 mark. Right now, Brent, Illinois really, ha really has a superior front line as far as rebounding. They have better stats, as I mentioned earlier, than Indiana, but particularly with this club on the floor, Indiana's going to have a hard time off the boards. Mintz outside. Short that time, and Callaway was fouled by Hamilton. Good block out. Now Let's here. watch Alford try to maneuver. Now Blackwell just being assigned with Douglas out. He's having a heck of a time. Well, he is. And Steve Alford got the double screen on the opposite side just before that. But Blackwell just staying right with me. Maybe a little bit too close to him here. If you stay that close to him when the ball is on the other side of the court, that's how you get picked off. But it's a tough assignment. 
and Douglas is going to report back into the game. Well, uh, what we had here was a very good substitution pattern by Lou Henson. He was able to give Douglas that little breather, make sure he didn't get into foul trouble when he started to reach, being a little tired. So now he comes back in rested, and he can start chasing again Steve Offutt again. Douglas rebounding the missed free throw. Douglas averages two and a half rebounds a game. As far as the floor game player, defense, passing the ball, and rebounding, it's about as good a guard as you're going to see in the college level. Hamilton. Callaway, two big rebounds. Douglas caught again. It's open. That was that double screen. Douglas got caught underneath the basket. Nobody switching out to help him. Billy, I would say that the weakness with the Indiana offense is the fact that when you're so one-dimensional, if you can do what Illinois does on defense, it's hard for them to look elsewhere for a lot of points. Hooking foul inside. Now, Michigan, of course, leading the Big Ten Conference at 5-1. and one. one of these four teams will give chase before this season is over. It always happens in the Big Ten. If Indiana can win today, they'll be 5-2, and two, and, of course, Illinois trying to rise up after that sluggish start. So this is a big game for these two teams. Another thing about Michigan, they've won three games on the road, and that's hard to do in this league. Norman turned into the baseline and hit the jump shot. What's so tough right now is that the Illinois big front line is packing it back in, and Brent, they're getting the ball down so low. Indiana playing right behind them defensively. Offered again from that spot. Well, Douglas probably wants to smack himself there because he turned his head when the ball went inside. His assignment stay with Alfred. Don't worry about that ball inside. He relaxed a little bit after yes, he that did. rest. And just a mental mistake. Mintz was going to try to lob the ball into Norman, and uh, Winston Morgan called for a foul, and Knight not agreeing with that whistle. His second person. What you have, Winston Morgan at about six foot five, trying to handle that big front line on the inside. He's you just have a hard time handling him in there. Again, man to man on an out of bounds situation. Interesting that they use the shortest man to inbounds the ball underneath the Indiana basket. Welsh due to check back in for Illinois momentarily. Five second over on the five second violation. And there's a case where you're trying to feed the post and nobody moving. And Henson <laughs> upset. He figures they gave one back tonight because he complains so vociferously at the other end. <laughs> Lou Henson was funny. He said, hey, we're running our offense. We're not trying to hold the ball. <laughs> and the fellow said, that makes no difference. It's still five seconds. Well, Indiana hitting only 43% against this Illinois defense. The Illini are hitting 67% against the Hoosiers. And you start talking about Indiana's been holding their opponents down to 45% shooting, so you can get an idea of how well Illinois is playing in their offense. Robinson on pull-up. He was fouled by Weisinger. And that was a clear-out situation where everybody was on one side of the floor. Weisinger couldn't get any help. Good job by Stu Robinson. See, there's not a person over on this side of the floor. Mintz had too far to go to help with the double team. There's the hit on the elbow, and that's the easiest way to stop a shooter. You hit him on the elbow, and if the referee never sees it, he'll never see it. Blackwell checks back, and Weisinger sits down. Oh, here's Stu Robinson out of Anderson, Indiana, at the free throw line for Knight. Of course, that's been the Madison Heights uh, where he went. Yeah, Bobby Wilkerson and Colbert. Winston Morgan was also a teammate. Outstanding high school uh, basketball program. You mentioned Morgan. He just left and Harris returned. It's unusual to see Knight with J.C. transfers coming in here. That's well, a departure. It really is. Uh, a few years ago, that would have been something that wouldn't even been in the program. Now Bob has two. Winters, a starter, got a long rest, and he'll check back in. Now Robinson on Douglas. Douglas will try to back him inside. Use his superior size. Blackwell was trying to swing and come down, and Alford coming through with the foul, his first. 
And that is Indiana's fifth here in the first half. With Doug Altenberger out, Blackwell really helps this club because he puts pressure on the defense. He likes to score. He's got the good outside shot, and that time he showed he could take it to the hoop. Got 3.55 to go in the first half, and we've got a timeout in Bloomington. Appalachian State. Do you remember this shot by Bruce Morris? It's in the Guinness Book of World Records now. It's been measured at 89 feet 10 inches. And today they have invited Morris back to school and at halftime of a game against Tennessee Chattanooga, 10 seat holders will have their stubs drawn and matched up with a shot. Morris will try to recreate it. If he hits either the backboard or the rim, the ticket holder wins a prize. And if he makes the shot, that ticket holder wins a trip for two to the Southern Conference Tournament in Asheville, North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> if he makes it, let's give him a little more than that. Let's uh, they should go to Hawaii. I'll tell you what we're What's wrong do? with that school? CBS going to send him a hat. <laughs> <laughs> The Illinois lady, 33-26, they've got possession. Douglas is 25, and Stu Robinson on him. He gets it inside. The winners have returned it. Blackwell. Norman with a hand on it, and it went out of bounds, so it'll be Indiana. On the second thought, Brent, if he makes that shot today, you and I are going to send him to the Final Four. Oh. All right? I'll pick up the tickets in the room. You get the airplane flight. Make him our stats man. That's right. Illinois goes a little zone. 3.24 to go. Robinson. Now, the zone does a couple of things. It makes Indiana change what they had planned in their offensive structure. Also, rest their players a little bit. And with winners back in the game, it helps him not get in more foul trouble than he's already in with two. Norman. Good block. Harris. Alloway rebounding. Indiana can pull to within three. They showed the zone. Now they're right back to the man-to-man -man again. Good screen by Harris. Steve Alford didn't realize how open he was going to be. Could have got his jump shot off there. Still 12 seconds left. Now it's down toward five. Galloway with a shot clock at two, just missed it. And it's Illinois rebounding. Blackwell with possession. Didn't smoothly come out of there, so he wisely held up. Douglas and Harris rebounding. Robinson had broken free at the other end, and Harris did not pick him up in time. Good position, nice defense. And Robinson is fouled. And, of course, a reminder that near the conclusion of this NCAA game on CBS, Billy and I will select a Chevy, most valuable player of the game, and Chevrolet will donate a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of both Illinois and Indiana. Blackwell coming out. I'm really kind of surprised that Lou Henson is letting Ephraim Winters stay in this ball game right now. He's got two fouls on him. There's only a minute and 53 to go. Don't want him to go in there at halftime with three. Douglas sits down. Obviously, he doesn't want him to pick up another foul. Free throws have helped the Hoosiers here in the first half. They are now 9 of 10, and Illinois is 1 of 1. Harris got in there pretty quick that time. Officials probably warned him a little bit. He's a good-looking athlete. That time, Norman was in too soon. Harris faked him out. Nothing called. Now, the Illini have not scored in 3 minutes and 18 seconds. case, Brent, where a lot of players get in a position, they forget that they still have their dribble left. You know, winners acted as if he had to get rid of that ball. If he'd have just put it down on the floor and relaxed a little bit, he'd been all right. Galloway misfiring. Norman, but it was a bad pass, and Robinson with the steal. It's a two-point game. Two big turnovers by Illinois. These fans love their basketball here at IU. 
Norman trying to hold Harris. Harris going to get called for the foul. Norman had him pinned. Now Callaway is throwing his arms open like, what did I do? Well, it's not going to be Cal. It's not going to be Callaway. I think it's going to be Harris. Right. You notice that he right. It right. was Harris. Harris. They called him for pinning his man, who was Norman. Asked for a towel to dry off the spot where Callaway fell. And we've got a very competitive game against two teams that have played each other year in, year out. Two coaches that know each other's style. They play a lot of the sim. They do a lot of the similar things. Game's kind of exactly what you'd expect out of a Big Ten rivalry. A minute to go. Almost stolen and it is. Harris followed up Robinson. And the game is tied, and Harris has come off the bench to contribute. With 58 to go, Lou Henson wanting one shot. Obviously, he can't hold it all the way to the end. Winters, no basket. The whistle sounded earlier, and you couldn't hear it because of the crowd. Uh, Bobby Knight probably wondering, those calls inside have all against the defense Brent and when the referees are establishing a pattern like that you've really got to change what you're trying to do defensively inside you know if it's half and half maybe you go ahead and do something else Bob Knight may have to start playing in front of those fellows that are posting up so low he lost both Thomas and Harris night before last in their overtime victory over Purdue Holloway yanks it down Stu Robinson has scored Indiana's last nine points he is three for three, and he's added three of four free throw attempts. And they're going for one last shot. Spreading it out. He comes out to get the ball. Blackwell is dogging Alford. Callaway picked up his dribble in a bad spot. Good help by Harris. Harris with a great pass to Alford. Yes. Three point play. Oh, God. We're down to two seconds. Here's Steve Alford moving without that ball. Harris fired that pass in there. Good hands by Alford. Hooks his man a little bit, comes inside, gets off, but he doesn't get the roll. I think Alford thought he was further in underneath the basket than he was. He almost have taken that pass as he touched it and went up with a layup. He continued on through and he gave himself a much more difficult shot. Mention Alford scoring. He's in a pretty heated battle with Scott Skiles from Michigan State who has had an incredible year. He was the player of the week last week in the Big Ten. Just playing excellent basketball. He made an interesting comment. He said, if Bruce Douglas is the best guard in the Big Ten, I'm the best guard in the universe. I asked Steve, where does that put him? Great first half. And Indiana comes hustling back. Not allowing Illinois to score a point in the last 5-11 of the half. 12-0 run. And they were helped considerably at the free throw line. Well, one of the things Bob Knight pointed out yesterday at practice, they have got to get to the free throw line. They're doing that by taking the ball hard to the hoop. And Winters with those three fouls for the Illini, who shot well from the field in that first half, hitting 57%. And points off of turnovers. Indiana was able to pick up a six-point edge in that department. As for Steve Alford, who we've been talking about, he was three of eight for the Hoosiers, total of seven points. Thomas was four of eight and 12 points overall. Douglas hocking Alford right away, and they get it inside to Thomas, who goes to the glass. And he sure has looked good. He really does. He's quick on the inside. He uses his body well. Good turn and move. Ephraim Winters had him on the hip. Couldn't handle him. Indiana only shooting 46% the first half. They're the third leading field goal for shooting team in the nation, percentage in the nation. Same deal for Winters, only he loses control. Tracked down by Norman. Norman comes back inside, and he maintains his hot stance. That's his 15th point of the game, doing a fine job on the inside. He is 7 of 8 from the field here this afternoon. Alford with 
with that quick shot after flashing into the key. And he comes off those double screens. It's tough, so tough. And that time, Douglas had excellent position. Still couldn't stop it. Douglas. Norman again, and he is a thoroughbred. The problem for Indiana is when they have to play a small man on Douglas, he just backs them down inside the foul line. Goes off it again, moving without that ball. He's a big First second half on scorer. Douglas. Alford comes, gets it to Thomas. Alford is really a great second half scorer. He seems to have unbelievable stamina for all the work he does without that ball. Welsh for the Illini pulls it up. Galloway played pretty good defense. Welsh still got it off. Brett, you see Winters still had his dribble left. He shouldn't have had to worry about being off balance. Just put the ball on the floor and get yourself reorganized. Plays a little stiff. Get it inside to Winters, and he was fouled by Thomas. That's Thomas' second personal foul with Indiana State over Illinois State by five at the half, and Louisville leading Kansas by that same margin, five. And how about that one? Canceled because of chicken box. The LSU team has been quarantined. This is the week for strange cancellations. Might have been walking. Gets it inside. Norman passing to Winters. We didn't get a handle on it right away, but it worked out well for the Illini. Brent, I wonder if these referees have ever heard of a three-second violation. I mean, the guys are planting themselves in the lane forever. Good athlete, Norman goes up, gives to another powerful athlete, Winters. He'd been in that lane all day. We haven't had a three-second violation yet in the game. Pretty difficult to defend the man if he can camp down inside the lane for a long time. He was named all preseason Big Ten. Even the coaches and sports writers from this area felt that winners had to come back from the year he had last year, where his scoring average dropped almost five points a game. Alford and Douglas coming across. Foul, Steve. That's his first. In the first half, Illinois was doing a real good job helping Douglas out with switching a little bit. That time, you see, Winters could have helped Douglas a great deal by staying out there on his man until Douglas could come back and catch up with Alford. With all these screens, it's very difficult to stay with him every time. So Knight is going with Robinson, Callaway, Alford, Harris, and Thomas. And Henson with his starting five that includes Blackwell in that backcourt along with Douglas. Welsh. Winters and Norman, and Norman has hurt Indiana all afternoon. 17 points, he's hit eight of nine from the field. Number 33 is kind of a quiet star, isn't it? He's so strong down in there. Jumping out, Robinson with a foul, and the referee looking back towards Callaway now, and Callaway is going to be assessed that personal. It's not going to go against Robinson. That's Callaway's first. That's a big turnaround because Indiana was off to the races with a layup had they got that ball. Blackwell. <laughs> On the turnover, it'll go to the Hoosiers. And Norman having to hold his ground down there so long, Brandon, it's very difficult to extend yourself to catch the pass. A lot of good body movement on the inside. Alford coming through, and Douglas fights through another screen. Harris out high. Robinson. Callaway, the freshman. He's short. Douglas over to Winters. Harris got a hand and knocked the ball out of bounds. 
Lou Henson wants to speak to Douglas. Douglas on the year coming in this game, 118 assists, only 50, 32 turnovers. You're talking about that's a great go there for a backcourt man that handles the ball as much as he does. He holds the records at Illinois for assists uh, in a game, in a season, and in a career. Harris taking Norman and low. Winters got the bounce. Winters has good range. He can shoot that 15, 16 foot jumper as well as post up inside. Thomas being forced out further from the basket here by Winters. Thomas has to return it to Robinson. Winters rebounded. That's the shot IU would like for Robinson. He can make it when you run your offense and execute well. Even if the shot doesn't go in, you have to be somewhat satisfied as a coach. team runs their offense to perfection, misses the jumper. The other one doesn't do anything but take a shot, goes in. Indiana has missed three straight shots. Here's Harris. Wow. He got the roll. You could see some of his athletic skill when he pivoted and rose in the air. However, you might be a little bit surprised he didn't pull the trigger right away. He made it a little bit more difficult than it had to be. Norman and Harris just battling with their bodies inside. Welsh gets it back. Jump hook rolls in. Yeah, we really have both teams playing, Brent, without a center. Without a true center, we've got six forwards in the game. So they're quick in there. They've got a lot of good moves. All can leap fairly well. All for cutting back, and he drew the personal foul from Douglas with that quick turnaround step. Excellent spin dribble. Another one of those son of a coach. Steve Alford played for his father. Let's see, we saw Lebo. That's right. North Carolina. Hale, North Carolina. All intelligent players, too, as a result of it. We'll be right back. Fun of Chevrolet in 86. Sears, where you'll find great values. There's more for your life at Sears. And by Lowenbrow, brewed in the great beer-drinking countries of the world. This world calls for Lowenbrow. Amidst all the red, there is a touch of orange. Mary Henson, the wife of Illinois coach Lou Henson, and she makes all the trips to see the fighting Illini. They have four children, a couple of grandchildren. They'd both play well in Syracuse, too, wouldn't they? <laughs> Thomas. And it's a two-point lead by the Illini. Screening for winners. Norman. Great rebound. Winners with a strong and Harris with the goaltending. Good call by the official. That's a great rebound by Ephraim Winners. He was actually fouled, pushed out of the way, and still was able to hang on. Bob just working him a little bit. Douglas right there with him, and Harris flashes open, but he was sort of thrown off a little bit and misfired to the right. Illinois staying with that starting lineup. They got in a little trouble when they substituted. Good play by Winters. Douglas. That's a great play. You've got a man double teaming you on the inside. He threw it right back out. That's going to be available as this game moves down the line here, Brent. Is Indiana really packing it back in, trying to stop that inside game? Robinson turned back. Nice defense by Blackwell. Winston Morgan. Thomas. Tough shot. him further away from the basket. Boy, that's a tough shot. 
It's a four-point Illinois lead. Thomas slips. Good play by Thomas. Got it to Norman, and Harris rejected it. Well, Harris is all over the place inside. I'm not sure he knows who his man is, but he's trying to pick up the world. Welsh going to the glass. when he turned to grab that ball. That's a big miss. One of these two clubs got to get a little bit tired. They've been banging inside so hard. Welsh. That's a foul. Alfred Winters knocked this man right to the floor. No call made. Alfred bringing it down, and Knight will work the officials over this trip. And is he ever on him? It's open. He's missing. Harris couldn't rebound it. Illinois coming back down, and Knight kicks a chair. What happened? Ephraim Winters just knocked Thomas to the floor. They're still banging inside. Welsh flashes, gets the ball back to Winters. It's blocked. Here come the Hoosiers. Three on one. And Robinson takes it to the glass. And Knight is still working the referees over. That was a great defensive play by Thomas on the inside because Welch and Winters had excellent position. They just couldn't get the shots off. Hey, Billy, do you think that was the same chair as a year ago? A little touch foul, foul by right? Robinson. And Knight is up. Tough atmosphere to referee a game in. was called He's, he may leave the arena but in my opinion Brent the referee called that technical a long time ago you can't let a coach come out on the floor and start talking to you like that and if they're going to get any credibility they've got to start slapping those technicals on people I'm not saying that they've made every call correct here but you've got to have some presence on the floor if you're going to referee a game now Knight had not been kicked out Weisinger hits the first, misses the second. Illinois leading Indiana, 55 to 50. This was the conversation right after the timeout. I mean, no technical was called here. Bob is calling him everything, and you can pay that coach down on that seat. <laughs> Illinois gets possession on that foul. goes over to Indiana. I think it would have been a good idea there for Illinois to punch the ball inside and see if that, that referee would have called it again. Robinson bringing it down for the Hoosiers. Thomas rimmed out. All right, Norman's having some fine game. He's a J.C. transfer also. Had to hold out a year. Came on strong at the end of the last year when Mintz got hurt. Got a chance to start. He's got good position. They dump it to Norman. Harris is with him. Robinson helping out. So they move it around the horn. They try Mintz on this side. Here's Welsh getting it over to Douglas, who ships it off to the corner. Indiana coming down. It's a, a good point game. You got to feel a little momentum change right here, going Indiana's way. Might not be a bad time to real annoy to slow this crowd down a little bit with a timeout. Oh. 
Norman spins it off to Mintz, and he is fouled. Harris was there in the middle of the lane as Mintz came down, and that is the third personal on Harris. It's a good job by Mintz. He realizes that Harris is such a great leaper, and he just used his body, held the ball up a little bit to draw the foul rather than try to lay the ball up. Had he shot the ball, Harris would have picked it off. Blackwell checks back in for Henson, and Weisinger sits down. The Blackwell-Douglas combination in the backcourt has really proved problems because they've got good size back there. Indiana has a little matchup problem. We have not seen much of Illinois' talented freshman, Lowell Hamilton, here this afternoon. He played briefly in the first half. Well, what's that deal? The best thing about freshmen, they eventually become sophomores, and I think that's what we're seeing a little bit there by Lou Henson. Doesn't want to put him in, in a critical situation. Illinois leading by four, 9-10 to go. They're giving Harris the shot, and he passes it up. Robinson. Robinson having a big, big game. Had a super NIT series last year for Indiana. Dropped that final game to UCLA. Played well both in scoring, defense, and assists. Blackwell. Thomas rebounding. The Hoosiers can tie it. And nice. Thomas, he is fouled. Beautiful spin move by Thomas. Mintz is second personal. You have Welch asking to come out. Looks like he needs a rest. from winners due to check back in Welsh being bothered by something one of the things Brennan and I mentioned that timeout Illinois needed one from a momentum standpoint and also it looks like in this particular case it got Welsh's looks like his hand or his arm are hurting bothering him a little bit Thomas has scored 20 points already for Indiana on a bad ankle. <laughs> Deadlocked at the 824 mark. And that sea of red rises here. Douglas off the fake. Winters rebounding, knocked away. Winters knocking everybody down. Winners clean house in there. No foul on the inside. Douglas, after three or four pump fakes, misses one. Good rebound by Winners on the inside. He gets it stripped. Now watch him just knock people down by Ephraim Winners. No question about it. Instead, it's called on Thomas. Ephraim Winners committed maybe two fouls on that occasion. Referees not doing a good job with the inside play today in my opinion offensive rebounds in the second half seven for illinois and none for indiana and norman breaks the tie you know one of the things too brent a lot of teams in the big 10 go inside with this passing game and it is a difficult game to referee but the referees have to get on a little better control than they are when a man just knocks another one to the floor well, that precipitated the chair kicking incident exactly. a while ago, the first time he cleaned house down here. And now, for the second time today, Illinois goes to the zone defense. Trying to trap a little bit. Alford. If Indiana can just be patient, Alford's going to have a jump shot. Morgan. Stu Robinson got it back can get a jump shot here. They just have to be patient for it. The other. Get it inside to Thomas. Norman came through. They get it out to Alford. Misfires. No goaltending. No foul. Knight again upset. Five that one a grasping the rim call. 
They get it to Norman, and Harris fouls underneath the basket. That is the fourth personal on Harris. There is no place for the meek in Big Ten basketball around the hoop. Harris did get ball, but he also got some action. Chicago boy. Attended Wabash Valley JC. Now we know where the Chicago Bears learned how to play defense. <laughs> well, you've got a number of Chicago kids in this game. Well, that turned the Illinois program around because for a long time they could not recruit Chicago youngsters. And when Hinson came in, Billy, that was one of the first things he changed. He improved relations dramatically with the Chicago area high school coaches. And that began to funnel talent downstate. And as a result, the Illini have been a national power ever since. In the Union, few are more passionate about the game of basketball than the state of Indiana. And a lot of that passion is coming together here this afternoon under Coach Bob Knight as the Hoosiers find trailing Illinois 60-56 in an important Big Ten game for both of these schools. And there is a former Indiana star. Kind of interesting, uh, Quinn was released from the Indiana Pacers. That very day he came down and sat on the bench uh, with Bob Knight and the team. And uh, Indiana was able to break that losing streak at home. Bob said it's one of the finest things that he's ever had a former player do since he's been involved in coaching. And he considers Quinn one of the smartest basketball playing thinkers that he's ever been associated with. Alfred has had a hard time scoring on Douglas when he doesn't get the screen. So Douglas staying right with him. Alfred maneuvering, gets the pass, ships it into Thomas. Harris keeps it alive, stays with it. Can't get the shot down. Oh, try. Finally, Illinois takes it away. Can't fault the effort there by Harris. shot up kind of quick. It seemed to me they ought to use the ball a little bit more. Use some time on the clock. That's a mince foul. Trying to get position. Three personals on Mince. And of course today we've got an NCAA doubleheader and then tomorrow we'll turn our attention toward the NBA here on CBS and that's always a great matchup, isn't it? Philadelphia 76ers and the Boston Celtics, they could be headed for another Eastern Conference Championship Series in the spring. Bounce to Thomas. He's had a spectacular afternoon offensively. He's 9 of 16, 24 points. I mentioned he had that bad ankle, and you did at the top of the show also, Brent. He hasn't obviously then been in that good a physical shape because he hasn't been able to run, but still he's gotten it out here today. This is just good defense by Thomas. He holds his ground. Mintz made a real nice fake, and there was the hit. Mintz makes the shot. The offensive foul. After all the banging around, that was kind of a mild touch. But a good call. And Winters returns for Coach Henson. Illinois leads by two, 60 to 58. a little short Norman wrapped it up really not a good idea plenty of time timeout by Henson and the Illini they lead it by two we'll be back in Bloomington Indiana in a moment after two holes Hal Sutton at 14 under with the lead Billy I was just told by our producer Bob Dekas that Hal Sutton has a completely rebuilt brand new golf swing if that's the case I wish he'd send me his old one <laughs> You know, it's interesting, out in the desert, somebody always seems to get hot. And uh, Johnny Miller, remember the great years that he had on the desert? Lanny Watkins last year was strong in the desert. Maybe it's Sutton's year. Miller was better in the desert that year than Rommel. <laughs> Good comment. Welsh got the great roll. Shot. Welsh had a bruised elbow. A four-point lead at the 450 mark. 
goes back to the zone again. Now, if Indiana will be patient, they've got to give Steve Alford a chance to get off a jumper against this. Thomas. Haven't been able to stop Thomas all day long. Everybody's playing post-defense right behind the offensive player to get in up good position in low and just been able to score. There's Ephraim Winters again with that elbow. Norman, tough shot, rebounded to Harris. Illinois shows the zone and they go right back to man to man. One good thing about Alford, he has not tried to force bad shots, which is a mark of a real good player. Still moving, cutting, trying to get free. And this time, Blackwell takes it out of bounds. Ten seconds up there on the 45-second shot. Thomas is just breathing so heavy out there. He just doesn't want to give in. But you know he's got to be tired. Robinson rises up in the middle, tapped up by Harris, and he gets the bounce this time. Ties the score at 62, the sixth time that we've been tied. Physically, he's a warrior. <laughs> Boy, if they can ever polish some of those skills, but they got a talent here. Wanting to go inside to Ephraim Winters. Blackwell traveled. It'll go to Indiana. Three fourteen left. The Big Ten will have game after game after game like this this year with so many teams packed up there with a chance to play. They go back to the zone. Bruce Douglas very much aware in that zone where Steve Alford is at all times. Steve doesn't break down to the corner. Thomas again, and he got Norman up in the air to draw the foul. Came down hard on Thomas's right shoulder. Norman that time was laying off Thomas and figured maybe he could come across the lane and block the shot. He was up in the air. And Thomas, such a strong player. 24 points for Thomas in this game. He's perfect at the free throw line this afternoon. Seven straight. He's from the same high school as Isaiah Thomas. Not related, however. Good release on that foul shot. And IU takes the lead. 2.35 to go. Winners wants it. Rises up, and Harris knocks it out of bounds with a block shot. And what Harris is doing, he realizes that Winners is kind of like premeditating that he's going to put up the shot so Harris can come all the way across the lane. Timeout, Bloomington, Indiana. Most of you will see Walter Berry, the Red Men of St. John's, go up against Pittsburgh. That, of course, is a Big East contest. If you haven't seen Berry this year, you are in for a treat. Watch this spin. Come inside against Georgetown. Showing you why he, along with Steve Alford of Indiana here, one of the leading scorers in the country. So it'll be St. John's at Pittsburgh next. Here, Indiana leads Illinois by two. Illinois with the ball out of bounds. Two minutes and 28 seconds left in regulation. Obviously, Illinois wants to go inside. Norman, Ephraim Winters, and Indiana realizes that too. They don't want it to go inside. Douglas. Everybody They're giving Douglas that shot. Sure. They invited him to take it, and he finally did. Everybody was backed in about eight feet from the basket. Douglas had to take it. Down to the two-minute mark.
still cutting and moving and trying to get free. Now he's got possession, and Douglas has hounded him throughout much of this game. Good thing. Douglas so quick. Douglas recovers, offered off the drive, gets it down. That was just excellent defense and a super offensive move because Douglas can't be faulted for his defensive work on that play either. And Indiana are going to give up that outside shot and make sure they pack everything inside. Here's Welsh forcing one up. And Norman comes to the glass with the field goal. I'll tell you what, Illinois was lucky that time, but you luck is the residue of design. That shot. And a sort of effort by Ephraim Woods to keep the ball alive. Now, in the first half, breaks were all going Indiana's way. There was Ephraim Winters tapping the ball over to Norman. He had excellent inside position, scores, and gets a chance for a three-point play. And Norman, who has scored 23 points and has played a five this afternoon, shooting for the point that will give the Illini the lead. 1-11. Pressuring the ball. Robinson brings it up on Blackwell. Alford cutting. Spins back inside. Now gets it to Thomas. Thomas rises up, and he's fouled by Norman. That's about the best thing Norman can do, just make sure he doesn't get something off inside. Good move that time by Steve Alford to, to dish it off. Little two-man basketball here, and they got the man to the line. Screen and roll. Ephraim Winters came over to try to help out. Good roll to the basket by Thomas. Thomas has scored 28 points. He's 8 of 8 at the free throw line today, so Alford got the ball in the hands of the right man. And Henson will die a great play off of this one way or the other. And Knight, of course, will go into some defensive tendencies, things that Indiana might use here defensively at the other end. Well, what you also have to think about now, Brent, is with 57 seconds to go, you want to have the ball in your possession for the last 45. So if you're Illinois, do you want to come down there and take a shot quickly? Get another chance to get the ball back. Depends on where these fouls are made. So the two chess masters go at one another. You can't find two better organized coaches than these two gentlemen. Knight, obviously, the more emotional the two. Yesterday at practice was absolutely fascinating to watch Knight. Not one starter took a shot during their formal practice. They worked only on defense. He will have them out for 15 or 20 minutes. Then he goes back into a tape session. He would run through some of the things that Illinois would use. They'd come back out on the floor and work on defense again. Then this morning at 9 o'clock, he had another practice, and they went through what they were going to do offensively against Illinois. And right now, Knight trails Henson, who has beaten Knight three straight times, which is unheard of in the Big Ten. And Henson with an opportunity to make it four in a row here. Thomas ties the game at 67. Thomas has had a super game. He's 10 for 10 at the free throw line, and he has put the Hoosiers ahead. And if you're Illinois, I think you want to get this shot off so you can get that last opportunity. Too late now. Well spinning inside, and again he rises up with that shot, and he is short. That's the second time that he's done that down the stretch. Now they will try to kill the clock. And Alford will keep it in his hands and dare them to foul him. And there's the foul. Bruce Douglas did foul. And boy, if you talk about a man you want on that foul line, Steve Alford, he has been tough in the clutch throughout his career. 90% free throw shooter. I'm surprised that Illinois didn't try to deny him the ball in the backcourt on the inbounds pass, that they didn't run right at him and make him 
throw it someplace else. They made it very easy for Alford to dribble the ball across with time running down. Now at the free throw line today, Indiana is 18 of 1. They've hit 86 percent. There is their 19th point at the free throw line. They have a 10 point advantage on Illinois at the line this afternoon. 31 seconds left. Across the midcourt line, Douglas has the call from the bench. Oh, Douglas from the Predators, yanked away by Winston Morgan. And the foul in the backcourt, Billy, I can't believe the shot selection by the Illini here in the last couple of minutes. Well, they had plenty of time, Brent. You figure they at least try to go inside one time. Instead, they come up and take the jumper in a hurry. The one man that I've got to have handle the ball in this situation is Norman. He's played too well for me. I mean, i got to say, you got to touch it. You may not shoot it, but it's coming through. So We've got out. a timeout at the 17-second mark. Bob Knight and the Hoosiers with a chance to pull one out here. Free throw line, Indiana leading it by two and 17 seconds to go. 72% free throw shooter. That should do it. If you're Indiana now, you one thing you definitely don't want to do is foul. You make Illinois come down, move that ball, but you do not foul. There's a four-point lead, and Bob Knight quickly calls another timeout. He wants to go over the fact that he doesn't want to foul. He wants to stress how to handle this defensively. And if Indiana can hold on here, Billy, they'll move to five and two in the conference. They'll pull to within a half game of the Wolverines. And if you're Illinois, you've got 17 seconds to go. Obviously, you've got to get that ball up court quickly. Go inside. Try to get your three-point play. But get a shot off as quickly as possible. Then on the inbounds pass, if you do score, you either go for the quick foul, I mean the quick steal, and then try to foul because you can't let Indiana hold on to that ball the rest of the way. They've got the three-point, they got the four-point lead. You've got to go in there to try to get a three-point play inside. And I think really in the case of Illinois, that their shot selection the last two times down the floor where they did have an opportunity to put themselves in a good position to win, they were kind of questionable. Welch took that tough shot, and then Douglas just threw up a jumper from the outside. In any case, two fine teams going after each other today. A very physical game inside. A lot of banging. And two teams that I think Grant will be tough to knock out when it comes to NCAA tournament time. I mean, you, you know, to win a national championship, you got to beat people like this. And, uh, and they are not easy. Well, Knight and the Hoosiers got to the line 25 times this afternoon. Illinois shot only 12 free throws. Those are the standings when we began. And you can see that Illinois would drop to 500 in the conference. Michigan's only loss to the hands of Minnesota. Minnesota, of course, going to lose one tonight by, or tomorrow by a forfeit. Again, in case you just joined us and you're wondering what Billy Packer is referring to, the game against Northwestern has been canceled by Minnesota Athletic Director Paul Geal because of those impending sexual harassment charges against several Minnesota players. The official is over now explaining something to the Illinois bench. Might be talking about putting a player in the game. Blackwell was not in the game. He's going to make him go back with Ephraim Winters. He, he, Blackwell did check in. Bobby Nice trying to make sure that they didn't forget to, to check in a player. Winners was in the game. He's back in there now. Good job by Indiana to pick up full court so that Illinois can't quickly get the ball down court. Weisinger taking it to the hoop and no place to go. Lost control when he tried to get between two defenders. Welsh is short. 
Weisinger at the five second Nine mark. Out. Banks one out there. They're Two out of seconds them. to go. They're out of them. And Alford just holds the ball. No outs. So Indiana beats Illinois. 